Kohler generators provide years of dependable service when installed and maintained appropriately. In this video, we'll go through the steps involved in installing a Kohler 50 kilowatt diesel generator. We'll discuss factors in choosing its location, talk about what you need to do when the unit arrives on site and how to safely move it into place, and go over the diesel fuel systems. We'll also provide details on a natural gas or LP installation, go over the electrical systems, and the startup procedures. This DVD is designed to allow you to easily view topics. Simply click a title on the left to jump to a particular section. Also, this program is simply meant to familiarize you, the installer, with the process. It is not intended to be a step-by-step -step guide. A couple of important notes. Any Kohler generator should be installed by a licensed contractor. As in any installation process, it's important to read manuals for complete instructions and clearly understand all safety warnings. This video does not replace the installation manual. Please note that we will be showing you a typical installation. Specific site conditions may require additional work. You must follow local electrical codes and permit requirements. Noise ordinances, positioning of the generator, and electrical codes are among the issues that can vary in each municipality. The ideal location for the generator set is on concrete at ground level. In this video, we are installing a diesel 50 kilowatt generator outdoors. Refer to the dimensional drawings for minimum required clearances. Be sure to allow for adequate airflow. That means avoiding areas next to tall buildings that block air, and areas that are windy or have excessive dust and other contaminants. If the generator will be above ground or on a rooftop, a building engineer will need to determine whether the structure can support the weight of the generator set along with any related equipment. Once the unit arrives, inspect it for damage before unloading it. Also, take time to review the safety instructions in the installation manual before proceeding. And review the dimensional prints for size and weight specifications. Also note the conduit and fuel line placement. Refer to the drawings for more information. In a typical installation, lift the entire enclosure, generator set, and sub-base fuel tank assembly by lifting on the sub-base fuel tank lifting eyes. It's important that you do not attach hoisting equipment to the enclosure base. Refer to the illustrations in the manual for more information. Remove the rear panel of the stub-up area so that you have a better view of the stub-up piping on the concrete slab as you move the unit into place. Then anchor the generator set to the concrete. Use bolts cast into the pad, or drill holes and use expansion anchor bolts. Kohler recommends a single, level, concrete mounting pad because it provides maximum stability. The concrete pad needs to extend a minimum 6 inches beyond the generator in each direction creating a 6-inch border around the unit. The weight of the concrete pad should exceed the total weight of the generator package. If you are installing a natural gas or LP fuel system, details about the generator setup and location are the same as with the diesel power generator. Review all safety instructions and refer to dimensional drawings for lifting specifications. Install gas regulators to reduce high volume fuel pressures to the lower levels that engines require. Refer to the spec sheets for details. For LP fuel systems, the single source types include vapor or liquid withdrawal. Vapor withdrawal requires that you allow from 10 to 20 percent of tank capacity for fuel expansion from a liquid to vapor state. LP liquid systems have the same basic components and operate in the same general sequence as LP gas vapor withdrawal systems. One final note. Never use the fuel piping or fuel line clamps to ground any electrical equipment. There are a number of electrical connections to make between the generator set and the transfer switch and other components. Refer to the submittal catalog accessory drawings and wiring diagrams for details. And be sure to comply with all applicable codes when installing a wiring system. Make the appropriate neutral and ground connections according to code requirements. 
Feed the load leads from the stub up into the generator junction box. Use a minimum of 13 millimeters or half inch spacing between the conduit bushing and any uninsulated live parts in the junction box. The ground lead will connect to a copper bus bar on top of the alternator. The generator sets are usually shipped from the factory with the neutral attached to the alternator frame in the junction box. The neutral can remain grounded at the alternator or lifted from the grounding stud and isolated if the installation requires an ungrounded neutral connection at the generator set. Refer to the NEC and local codes for more information. Before you tighten the connections on the terminal, refer to the torque values in the installation manual. Install and connect the battery. Then mount the receptacle for the battery charger, battery heater, and the block heater. There should be two separate circuits, one for the block heater and another for the battery charger and battery warmer. Engine-driven battery charging alternators charge the starting battery whenever the generator operates. When the engine is not operating, a very low charge rate from an AC-powered battery charger is usually sufficient to maintain a full charge on the battery. Refer to the dimensional drawings for details on mounting location and charger specifications. In cold climates, a battery heater can be used. Again, refer to the dimensional drawings for details and specifications. For control of the generator set, the customer will supply the necessary wiring to the site. This wiring should be run in a separate conduit from the AC power. Make the connections to the remote start. Also make the connections to the dry contact board. The Ethernet Modbus converter is an optional accessory. Finally, connect the Ethernet cable to the Ethernet Modbus converter. Before starting up the generator set, review the safety warnings. Go through the installation checklist. Be sure to fill out page 1 completely. Then go through the generator set transfer switch startup checklist. Check that the air cleaner is clean and installed. Check for clean unobstructed air inlets. And check the fuel level. Verify that the engine is filled with oil and the cooling system has antifreeze. Then prime the fuel system. Place the generator set master switch in the off reset position. The fault lamp should illuminate. Press and hold the alarm silence for lamp test. Make sure all lamps on the panel light up. Check the battery charger LEDs for battery charging indication. Place the generator set master switch in the run position. Verify whether there is sufficient oil pressure. Check for oil, coolant, and exhaust leaks. Now is the time to schedule a startup with your local Kohler distributor. This concludes the overview for installing a Kohler 50 kilowatt diesel generator. Again, consult installation manuals for more detail on proper installation procedures. This video does not replace the installation manual. Please note that we demonstrated a typical installation. Specific site conditions may require additional work. Always follow local electrical codes and permit requirements. For more information on this and other Kohler Power Systems products, contact your nearest distributor. You can also call this toll-free number or visit us on the web at kohlerpower.com.